Let's get ready for our hypertext markup language or HTML lesson two. Before you do this lesson, you should have gone through HTML lesson one and completed the assignment. So let's talk about our essential questions for this lesson. Um, why do we need comments and how do we insert them? Make sure you have some comments in your code today. How can I find information on HTML tags and learn more? How can I do the font tag? Now one reminder, it's a good idea to have this video up and to have your HTML up in your notepad and then open it in your web browser to test it as you go. How can I insert an image from the web? And we're also going to learn a little bit about where images are hosted and why that's important. How can I insert videos from YouTube and create lists? We're going to learn also the difference between an ordered list or OL and an unordered list, which will be UL and what that is and how to do it. And some other widgets I can find to insert into my HTML code. And remember, HTML is important for us, um, for my students, because we can use that in our Crisserets app. Um, to insert HTML. Um, it's also important for just about anybody because HTML is the language of the web. So understanding a little bit will help you with your blog or with your website or just about anything because there's so many places you can go to insert HTML code in just about any tool. So why do we need to put comments on web pages? Well, these are really short web pages. We're just doing them by ourselves. But if you're working with others, you want to put comments in the code so people know what it is. For example, you'll learn how to insert a widget uh, into the code for your app, and you'll want to mark this with a comment. Now, notice that when I put in the comment, and then I save, and then I pull it into a web browser, this comment doesn't show. It's just in the code. And it's very useful for looking at other people's code to know what a comment is. And again, it starts with a bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, and then it ends with a dash, dash, and a bracket. And all of that will be ignored and won't be shown. So as we look at all these tags, you should know that places like w3schools.com will give you information on the tags and their attributes. Um, and this example is the font tag. Now, I'm showing you this just to have a good example because it's so easy. But notice that it says it's not supported in HTML5. A lot of this is moving into CSS or cascading style sheets. But because it's still going to work for us right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you this just so you can learn a little bit about how tags uh, work. But you can always look here and you can find all different kinds of things um, about HTML tags as you want to work with your code. There are also lots of free online editors and places you can go like lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A, where you can take classes on how to do it. And they have little fun little code editors where you can edit here on the left and then you can click see result and it goes ahead and does the process for you. So there are other ways to learn it besides how we're doing it. And again, we're using the method that we learned in lesson one of this video, which is we're creating it in Notepad saving it as an HTML file and opening it up ourselves, which is kind of the old fashioned way that we learned how to do a very long time ago in the 90s when some of us were learning how to use HTML. So again, we're going to build a nest. You can see here that the tag is font. So we begin and end with font and we have two attributes here. We have size and we're saying, you know what, I want this to be three sizes bigger than my size that's shown on the screen. And then that I want this to be blue. Now, you've already learned in my classes the hex numbers, but it'll also take all kinds of interesting colors. I mean, brown, blue, baby blue, all kinds of colors. You can try just about any of them, and it will take it. And again, this was HTML4 and earlier, so at some point this will be phased out, but for now we can learn how to do this. So here we have the font tag, and you can see that I've added another section. I put a little comment above it create another heading and I have got in my fonts so I've got a plus three font color blue putting the colors in quotes here blue and then I have a plus four and then I have sky blue um, that I'm going to show and that's just another color they have there so let's see what that looks like so you can see that I have um, you can tell these are two headings and then I have a, a blue and then a larger blue um, that you have right here so try this out with some other colors see if you can make this work uh, and you're again playing with a font tag and remember that you nest the tags like this 
But the attributes, you don't close the attributes, you just close the tag. And in this case, we're working with the font tag. I'm going to look up the IMG tag. This is the image tag that we're going to use. And I'm going to click IMG tag. Now, one thing I want you to notice is uh, we're about to learn how to insert an image. Now, this one it shows right here would only work if that was on the local computer. So I'm going to show you how to do that a little bit differently. Um, but you can see if we scroll down um, that images aren't technically inserted into a page. They're just linked to a page. So they're actually coming from somewhere else. An image is not actually on a page. Um, and this, of course, works in all of our web browsers. Now, I want you to notice we're going to play with the align tag, but it's not supported in HTML5. You can do borders. That's also not supported. You can still do the height and the width. And these are all of the descriptions of the things that you can do. Um, in here, you can even try it uh, on here as well. So I want you to be familiar with how you can look these tags up and what you can do with them. Okay, now we're going to insert an image. And you want to go and find whatever image it is you're going to insert. And you're just going to find a sample image. I'm just pulling one off of my own site. I'm going to right click and say copy the image URL. Now be real careful because if you um, use an image from somewhere from somebody else's server, that's uh, sitting on their server and it's being what we call called up. So if you caused a lot of traffic to go to somebody's site pulling that image, then they may um, make it block you or, or come after you or have problems with that. So be real careful about linking to other people's images. The images should really be on your own server um, or your own site. And that's why I'm just linking from mine. Um, so I'm linking this image here by typing in image and SRC. And again, I have my quotes. Now I can also um, put in what we call an alt tag, which tells what it's about. Um, this is important um, because those with disabilities, this is what will be read to them. So it's always just good good idea to have the alt tag. Now we can go ahead and say align equals um, right, and I think it will write align here as well. So I'm going to go hit file, save. I'm going to go back here to my, um, and open up my little image here, and let's see, and I did right align it. So I pulled in the image, and I right aligned that. So you'll want to just pull in a sample image. It could be just about anything for this activity. Um, and But notice that I'm going to have this full HTTP from wherever I copy it from. Um, and now Google Images, if this is a really, really long and it goes line after line after line, then you copied it directly off of Google Images. You didn't actually go to the original website where it came from. You know that you've got a good image when this ends in .jpg or .png. And again, just be careful that if you're going to use this in an app or in something that's going to have a lot of uh, pull on a server, you want to just make sure that you have permission to do that. Okay, so inserting an image or a, a movie is a little bit more fun, a little easier. So I've got this thing I did from Z Space where I um, did this really cool 3D thing. And I'm going to go here, and my students have heard me talk about this a lot, the embed code. Now, right now, this is part of a playlist. I'm going to turn that off. If I just copy this code, this is the embed code. That means it can be embedded. Um, I'm just going to grab it, and I'm just going to paste it in. Um, here, it is going to be kind of long. That's okay. Just leave it like it is. I'm going to file save this and I'm going to open it up and let's see I should have see I've got this little image here now there's other things that I can do to the YouTube video where you can change the size and you can do other stuff uh, and get more information for that embed code but you can embed a video as well. Anytime you see embed code, that's something you can embed in your HTML document or your blog or whatever. And just remember that if you're blogging, all the HTML has been built for you. We're just kind of getting nuts and bolts here so we can understand uh, in detail how this works. Okay, for now, we're still writing in an HTML document. So you can just type in HTML widget and find all different kinds of widgets. Just be careful if you're using this in your blog or on a, or on a website because you can kind of, you know, mess things up if you're not careful. Um, this is an example of a website that has lots of widgets that are easy to install um, that work inside browsers. And these are some things that you can use 
um, in your uh, your apps that you're programming that take HTML code. So you can see how you have holiday widgets and web page translators and you just come in here and you click get code. Now this is done with JavaScript. So JavaScript is not going to work on um, some sites in particular. It's not going to work on your phones. So if you see a JavaScript code, you probably don't want to grab um, that unless it's online. So it looks like this particular website has lots of uh, JavaScript stuff. Yeah, so we're probably going to have to look for HTML um, type code and you've got all kinds of um, different kinds of widgets that you can find that you can use on your sites um, with HTML code. So uh, lots of things you can grab lots of things you can use and you can use JavaScript it's just for the web but just be real careful about that if you're building for a mobile platform so here we go we're gonna make a list now if we want a bulleted list we're gonna do something called an unordered list that stands for UL if we want a numbered list it's gonna be OL or, or ordered list and I'm gonna do a UL right now well, one trick is I know I want to close that tag so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now each item in my list is going uh, to be um, started with uh, li so that's a list item and uh, and that's how I'm going to do that so I'm going to go ahead and do file save and I'm going to open up my little web browser here and you can see that here I've got uh, some other things we're going to be doing in a minute but I've got or that we've already done um, I've got here my hobbies and I've got my my list now if I go back in here and I'm going to say I'm going to change this to an order list and see what it looks like we'll just change this to the O file save and I'm going to show you a little trick I'm going to go here and I'm just going to hit refresh boom and see how this is now one two three four so in your assignment you need going to need to have either an ordered list or an unordered list in there and let's look back at that code one more time um, let me separate that out and I'm just going to put in a little comment here um, this is an ordered list okay and I just put that little order list in there for you each one of these is list items everywhere I want the bullet to be and then I have to close that ordered list so we learned how to hyperlink in the last video now I'm going to show you how to hyperlink your email now I'm not actually putting my real email because this video is going on the web but um, we have our anchor tag and we have our hyperlink reference and this time in quotes we put mail to colon and then our email address now there are other ways to do this I recommend you use a Google form or other things now and you can get um, the uh, code for Google forms and such uh, but this is how you can insert an email so there are lots of other things you can use in apps or in your HTML you've got Google Forms you've got HTML code you could do Google presentations and embed the code for that um, there are um, some websites you can go and make your own HTML code to program your own game of course we've talked about images but then there's some fancy things you can do with images and hotspots you can generate those social media widgets that show you your tweets and all kinds of stuff there's just really no limit to what you can embed or what you can create and put in your HTML code when you know how. So for my students, what's going to be included in the activity that you're going to do now is you're going to be creating a um, HTML page about your hobbies. And remember the basics we learned in the last video, opening and closing the tags open and close the head which is at the top remember that's different than headings the head is the top the title tag which runs across the top of the web browser your body tags and you've got to have two headings of different types so that means an h1 and h2 h3 h4 something like that i want them of different types you do need to hyperlink to a web page in this i also want you to have a larger font and a smaller font I didn't cover that hint is you use negative one or negative two for that another color of font link to an image align that image to the right 
hyperlink to an email address and have a link list with at least three items in it. You can also add other enhancements if you wish. You will do the screenshot in your web browser and you'll also turn in the actual HTML file into Haiku for this activity. And it'll be about your hobbies. So you probably want to have one heading that you know says my favorite hobbies. Another one can be my favorite places to go or my favorite books. But it's just about you and your hobbies. And remember, we're not going to publish this on the web. You're just going to turn this HTML file in so that I know you know how to do it. So this concludes our lesson two. It's all the HTML lessons I'll be teaching you. Remember, if you really want to get into this, there's all kinds of free classes at Linda, L-Y-N-D-A, and lots of other websites. So you can learn all about HTML. But honestly, you don't really even need to write it by hand because lots of websites will write it for you. But if you know a little bit about it, you can kind of troubleshoot your code and you can even look and see what other people are doing and how they set up their code so you can kind of tweak your site to do really cool stuff too.